Hi, I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor, and we are continuing sewing our Linda tunic. Today, we're going to sew the gathers and attach the collar. So the pattern pieces that you're going to need are the front and the back, which you've already attached the placket, so there's your front, two yoke pieces, and two collar pieces. For the gathering, if you notice, I have little snips here in the top of my shirt. So I'm gonna put chalk here just so you can see. This is where the gathering, this will be gathered to the yoke. And then on the back piece, I did the same thing. And I'll put some big chalk pieces. This is going to be gathered to the yoke. So the gathering on all three of these areas is exactly the same. I'm just gonna show you the back and then we're gonna sew the collar on. So let's go to the sewing machine. So for the back piece, I find this to be very easy to do it all in one step. So you don't need to keep going back and forth and pinning. I'm going to take the machine and change it to a basting stitch, which is a 5.0, and start just before that notch that you have. And this is the right side of the fabric facing up, okay? And then just go forward a little bit. Oops, wrong button. Go forward and back stitch. And then make sure it's on the basting. Okay, great. Just go straight. Go a little past your chalk mark here. And instead of using your thread cutter, if you have that, you're gonna put the needle in the up position and just pull this out. You need this long thread tail here. Now don't leave the machine. This is very simple. So take your bobbin thread, your bobbin, and just pull gently, just like that. How much do you pull? Well, you'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to try to sew this and lift it up so you can see because it's going to be covered, if that makes any sense. This is my back yoke piece. So with right sides together, this is my wrong side facing up. I'm going to start right here from the edge, change my stitch back to a regular stitch length, Center position is what I prefer. And this pattern has a half inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna stitch, back stitch. And now I'm just gonna hold my fabric right before that gathering starts and just stitch. I can feel that gathering with my finger, so I'm stopping with the needle in the down position. The next thing I wanna do is take my fabric and start here at the back side. So I know that that matches. And I'm just gonna grab one pin to hold this in place. This rayon chalice is a little slippery and if you're using silk chiffon or charmeuse, that's really slippery. So this will help you a little bit. And then I'm gonna line up a little bit more here and put one more pin. Okay. So here you go. This is my basting, you can see that, my gathering. And if you might notice, that's only about an eighth or two, like a fourth of an inch barely in there. So this is gonna be covered up. So here we go. Go ahead and stitch, and I'm going to make sure that those gathers are all in place, if you can see that. And then take the pins out and go ahead and stitch to the end. So my basting stitches are going to be covered up. I might have gotten that off just about a fourth of an inch, but that's what happens when you do it live, right? Okay, so let's see what we have. And there's my gathering. I will cut those threads, obviously. Those are my basting, but that's how easy that is. And then I will gather the front two pieces here and here. So let's get moving on to the collar. The collar is pretty simple. I actually cut my collar just a little bit longer than the pattern. Again, I like to have a little bit extra. It's just a personal preference. So with the right side of the garment facing up and your collar facing down, you have to picture it's going to look like this. Going to start just on the edge here. And the collar is a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna stitch, and then we're gonna go around. I think I'm just gonna pull this out on the machine. It makes it a little bit easier to maneuver. There we go. Now the collar can fit right around the edge. And I'm just going to stitch this collar right to the right side of the garment. And if you just hold this in place, you can get around the curve quite easy, easily. 
One thing I might have forgotten to mention is that I've already sewn both of my yolks in place. So there was two yolks. The inside one covers up the raw edges. You don't have to use that if you're using a sheer fabric, but I'll get more into that on a later lesson. All right, and let's get to the end. And back stitch. So the outside of the collar is in place. Make sure there's no puckering. That looks fine. And I'm going to just show you how to take this in place. You don't need any pins. I'm just going to start at the end using one pin to hold it. Let's see here. This is, I'm gonna do this part slowly. It's like this. Take this piece and fold it inside. So what you have here is I'm sandwiching this inside of this collar, just at the end. So I'll put a pin there so I'd need more hands to show you. Okay, so that's folded inside. So this is, I'm stitching on the exact same stitch line that I just had, just on the bottom edge and then around. So I'm just gonna do half of the collar so you can see what this looks like. So again, this is stitching in the exact same place that I just stitched, except both of my collars are right side together. And I can feel, I'll use this pin, so you can see where this pin is. That's the edge of my collar. And when I get there, I'm just gonna put the needle in the down position. Fold this around. And there's my top collar. And I'm just gonna go a little ways and then stop so you can see what actually happened there. It's a little hard to sew and twist and show you at the same time. A little bit further. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there before I get to the other end. I just wanna show you what was here. See, this is the wrong side. I'm just gonna snip that corner. and pull this. So you can see how that finished the front edge. I'll still have to finish the back, but it attached it right to that placket. It makes the front edge look so nice. So I'm just gonna go finish all the way around this side and then we need to go press. Again, I'm going to stop about right there. Oops, I didn't mean to cut. I keep hitting the wrong button. I'm gonna slide this into the inside. And stitch. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way here. Okay. Again, I told you I cut my collars a little bit longer just because I like to have the extra. You don't have to do that. If you don't, you just pin and you make sure it lines up. So this is what I have so far. This would be if I didn't attach that bottom part. So now turn this to the right side out and tuck under your placket. So again, this is the edge of my collar. That was my previous seam here. I'm gonna line those two up and just stitch a little ways. It just makes the end of your collar look nice and finished. And I'll just go a little ways. And now we're gonna go press. So up here, make sure I cut enough of that out. You'll wanna go through and trim the edges so they're about a quarter of an inch or less. Stick my finger in there. Before I flip over my collar, I'm using a point press to press the collar seams open. This just makes it, if you have your collar, you're gonna want, you don't want the seam to stick to the outside. Get a little steam. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of this, but I think you get the idea. You're gonna do it for the entire collar though. Okay, and now lay your collar flat. I'm pressing the collar into itself, the seam allowance into the collar, away from the garment. All right, and the last thing is to take your collar now, and because I press that seam open, 
Notice how it can curl to the back here. It's curling towards the inside of the garment. If you have any problems with that, you can understitch it and that will help. And then just tuck your seam allowance under, press, and use a tailor's clapper. There you go. And give a little more pressing. Now, I'm not gonna do the whole collar, but you're gonna do it for the entire collar. That's the inside, this is the outside. Your last step is going to be to top stitch. I'm just gonna top stitch just a little bit for you from the right side of the garment. So going back to the sewing machine, make sure that your stitch is about a 2.5 for this. It could go up to a 3.0, but 2.5 for a shirt is pretty good. And I'm gonna do a stay stitch and then go ahead and stitch. And I'm stitching right next to this collar and I can feel my seam allowance underneath. All right, I'll go a little bit further. Obviously you would do this for the whole collar and I'm just doing a half. <laughs> but you're gonna go all the way around. And this is what the outside of your collar will look like. This is what the inside looks like. I'm using contrasting threads so you can see it. So let's go back up here and take one more look. When you're finished, so we gathered the front to the back. We get, gathered the front to the back yoke. I sewed those together. There's my gathering here. And this is the part I wanted to show you where the inside, this was the second yoke that covered up all those seams. Then you attach your collar and your entire front is finished. So the last step, before we move on to the sleeves, you're going to sew the sleeve in place or you're gonna sew your tabs in, which is what we're gonna do in the next lesson.